Today, I have another member of the 540 community, or as I like to say, the 540 fam, with me. With me, Her name is Althea Damgard, and she's actually wearing her 540 shirt, which I would love to get one of those and show it off myself. So, welcome to the show, Althea. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> so, mm. why don't you start by introducing yourself to the viewers and the listeners? Well, I been writing a long time and I got serious two years ago um, and decided I better do something with it because I had plenty of time on disability with multiple sclerosis so and actually been having fun with it and finally published my first book in June so yeah oh yeah that I... oh go ahead I said, I said, when I'm not married to my computer, I'm hanging out with my hubby and my cats, which who may or may not show up. There's one walking <laughs> down the hall. Um, so. Wow. So um, when did you get started with the 540? I'm just curious. Uh, I went to, virtually to Blue Ridge two years ago when they had the last virtual one. And Becky was running all the Zoom stuff for us virtual people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I joined it during blue ridge two years ago so i've been a member just over two years now oh wow okay so how did you know when god called you to write that's a good question i've always liked writing stories i've written stories since i was seven um though i can't find that one but a lot of the stuff i wrote when i was a teenager is back there in one of those cupboards uh because it was paper in those days <laughs> and so um but as far as like I guess I always wanted to write but I didn't become a Christian until I was 33 but then once I became a Christian I was trying to figure out how to balance the things that I did like and how I was supposed to go forward with him as the pilot to my writing so that took quite a bit of time and I finally, you know, like I said, I got serious a couple of years ago. I went to the Blue Ridge Conference because I know Alicia Morales, who who helps with that conference. And from there, it just snowballed. And with the 540, I learned about a contest and I put my novel in a contest and actually won. And it just is kept going from there. But um I always knew I wanted to write. It's just a matter of going through and learning to figure out what God wanted me to do and, and where and how to get serious to it. So I went through a lot of training stuff for about a decade before I really, really honed in on stuff. And that way you learn all the nuts and bolts. Yes. <laughs> As I like to call it. So um, what is your, your, your process like? Are you, um, are you a pantser or do you, plan a little plot a little plot sir how do you i would well i would go with the term plant sir because like i do some planning and i do a lot of pantsering so like i have like an overview like book two i'm in the process of drafting that i'm like right in heading for like the climax part now but i have the general view idea where where i'm supposed to be going with it but the characters like adding their own things and kind of stuff goes through. Uh -huh. So, so like the stuff I'm writing isn't like in the nuts and bolts isn't planned, but it's leading towards where it's supposed to be going. So, so I kind of pants my way through my arc of idea. So at least I know where I'm, where I'm going and then I can go back and the, the interesting thing with that is I have to keep track of some stuff, but when I get done with the draft, I have to go back and read the whole thing, kind of make notes to see where, like, maybe I could foreshadow something that came up it later and or find something that isn't useful now. I can just take that scene out or whatever. So it yeah. kind of makes it, it does make things a little more interesting on the editing side because of having some pantsering thrown in there, but at least having some plot in mind makes it not so bad yeah mm. wow yeah i i get that and then i go revision it's like oh that doesn't work that works this yeah i'm throwing oh, yeah. some things out red but... flags all of, yeah oh I mean, yeah 
throwing some things out that that don't work. I'm actually working on that now, adding something. I'm going to actually end up cutting a, a chunk that actually needs to be for book two of my own book. So, yeah, that's a cool thing. You can you can the, the cut scenes, you can you can save them because they can be repurposed, whether they really belong in the next book or they just don't belong at all. But you can like put them out there and on your media and say here's a cut scene from my book you know oh i didn't even think publish about that. it yeah like after you publish it you go like here's some behind the scenes things of what i cut out of it or whatever you know the people mm -hmm. so because that can get that can get interesting maybe i could use those scenes and revamp them turn them into short stories or something <laughs> yeah you know so what was the inspiration behind champions of light that's Sandy. That question was coming up, and that's that's a hard one because I started writing it back in like two thousand seven, two thousand eight, and I just pantsed what I had. I didn't even plot. I mean, I kind of knew how to write stuff because I had gone through some of some writing stuff with the Christian Writers Guild, but it still existed. I went through like their apprentice level course where you kind of learn all sorts of different things about writing and articles and so it's kind of like the overview mm -hmm. and but I can't quite remember what inspired me to do it what inspired me to pull it out and play with it again though is when after joining the 540 someone posted stuff about like different contests and one contest was coming up and I learned about it like I don't know, middle of June, somewhere, or, or you know, by the end of June. So, and the the manuscript would have been due September fifteenth. So you had to have the whole thing written, and then have like send in like the first few chapters and stuff to the contest, almost like doing a proposal if you were going to submit to an agent kind of thing. And I don't know. I looked at them and looked at what I wrote, and I said, well, for their speculative, this will work. So that's how Champions Light Gap pulled out of the dust heap of storage <laughs> and I I ran with it and decided I actually liked it and figured out how to end it because it was it was stalled somewhere in the middle yeah just mm. because I had I hadn't actually planned it so I had to go through and read it fix things up and then go through but even after the winning the contest I had so much more that I actually ended up doing and had beta readers and everything so it it went through the the works before I published it this year. So ah, yeah, and it, it had that magical realism, and I love. I'm actually almost. Ha I'm a little over halfway done with it. I love that magical realism of the the spiritual warfare in it, and the Lord of Light is the Holy Spirit is is our Lord and Savior. I can sense that because. Yeah. Uh, you've peppered in some Bible verses from the quote from the script, if you will. Yeah. So yeah, I know it's like it's peppered. It so it's like it's definitely Christian allegorical, and I but yeah. But I had help with one of my beta readers really helped me hone in and how to make it flavored for like the fantasy world. So like, even though I did honestly take Christianity and throw it as religion in my book, um, I will be honest about that. I did that on purpose. <laughs> I sense that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All my books will have some form of like Christianity in them. I don't care. You know, they're all fantasy science fiction, but, you know, there'll be a thread of that truth in there. But we figured out how to do things. We had like the Lord of Light and then the name that he, you know, reveals mm -hmm. in the old language. And, you know, the breath is kind of like the Holy Spirit uh -huh. going out and stuff. So, but. I had one of my beta readers help me, you know, take it and come up with names, figuring out how to to gear it towards actually fitting into the way it would look in that realm versus ours. Yeah. Wow. So. And it's a fun read. If you haven't read it, I haven't finished it yet, but if you haven't read it, it's a it's a fun read. It's got some really tough scenes in it, but you don't have to answer this, but I'm wondering if she's gonna, if she's gonna uh, defeat her father. You don't know. I'm not gonna tell because you haven't read it yet. I want other people to read it too. But yeah, yeah, no, there's... don't spoil it for me. Nope. 
Oh, don't spoil it for me because I'm actually liking it. I don't want to spoil it because like the ending is all about how book two gets going. Even though you could probably read book two without reading book one, the way I'm trying to write it and at least have some of that backstory in there, you don't actually have to read book one to understand book two. Um, Hopefully that's the play but it's still it's gonna follow right along so if i mean if you b- read book one and you read you, you're definitely gonna know what's going to you know understand where things are coming from in book mm-hmm. two. you don't want to do too much backstory though no I, I don't have too much in there it's just it's more of like little little pieces of them remembering when they get a conversation there's a little little you know stuff that might come out so oh cool I'm yeah looking forward to that Oh yeah. Just like in the first book, there's like a little stuff, you know, the little tidbit to come so you kind of know where the character's coming from, even though that was stuff that happened before. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just a little it's, little pepper they sprinkled yeah. in there. Yeah, it's the same way on this one. It's it's peppered in with what they're thinking and doing. And, mm. Yep, and I got it. I'm a, I, I got it on Kindle Unlimited, so that's how I'm reading it. <laughs> Yeah, so you're one of my Kindle Unlimited page turners that I'm seeing going. <laughs> oh wow! Because <laughs> that's the cool thing when you put when you when you publish on Amazon, you can go on your reports and you can kind of see who's bought the ebook, who's bought the print book, who's reading on Kindle Unlimited. Oh yeah, last night I read like let's see, four or five chapters. Sometimes it's oh, it's hard to put down, and I like how you have the two the two different characters, Rolanda and Verna, um, Sergeant yeah. Vern, aka Versant. Yeah. Um, I like how you have the chapters between going between the two characters. Yeah, book two does the same thing. I I actually look at it, a lot of my writing and pulling out older stuff where I had like the male and the female, I alternate. That's just seems to be a pattern that really works for me in my writing. I've done it. I've looked at stuff all the way back to 2005, you know, that I've played around with writing, even some contemporary stuff that didn't really go well. I figured out I had two stories in one and have to figure out how to break it apart. If I'm even going to like go over in that genre and, and actually write that story. Cause I could pull out the one part and have one of those, you know, cowboy billionaire, like romance little things, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that was written when I was doing like um, beta testing, Jerry Jenkins, your novel blueprint. So yeah. Ah. Yeah. I actually got okay. to beta test that, so that was that was pretty awesome opportunity, and he's expanded it since then. But yeah. So who who edited for you? Um. Well, it was a combo of um pretty good critique because I won the contest, and then I had you know two rounds of my beta readers, and some of them were, you know, really good with like doing more editing and doing <laughs> stuff and then one of my arc readers found a few things to tweak to to help out in the end um so i've had professional eyes on it but i did you know i lucked out with getting stuff for like through a contest and get at least a look in the beginning of it and then beta readers some of them being a lot better as you know some of them were even editors to begin with that just wanted to read it for me so oh nice that is so, so. cool that is cool um and the contest i don't know if you're thinking of the same one i'm thinking of but i'm just thinking of the crown awards that acfw virginia does mm. I haven't been in that one it was it was like a it was like scrivening's press i even let them look at it oh too, after okay. after I won there, but yeah, I got lots of great feedback from them and worked on some stuff. And then between the different variety of people I had in my beta readers, I didn't have a huge beta reader thing, but I had just enough beta readers with different points of views and, and knowledge of writing plus just like reading that kind of stuff. So, yeah. And if you have people that you can actually trust, I had two people that I, that gave me some really good comments. I'm still working through those. I don't know how many of those I'm going to actually keep or how many I'm going to, uh, ideas I'm going to discard and, and 
you know, change for later, but I did have some really good beta readers myself, so I'm still working on the book, but at least now I know more about, I'm discovering where the story is actually going to go versus where it went when I first wrote it. Yeah, that's that's the uh, the fun part. I think that's mm-hmm. one of the things I had to figure out, because when I did write the first things, I actually have probably like five or six starts to what became champions of light that were totally off on another bet and but they helped me kind of figure out you know him and then as i went through i'm like okay we need to have something more interesting with you know so i came up with him and her and i had to figure out where it started and everything so so yeah it's it took it took a bit there's there's things I I know I could have done better, but everybody you know there's always learning things, which is awesome. So like I can just roll that into the next book. And, yeah. Yeah. Even even little tidbits, like if I get comments about like, you know how something happened, it it fed into ideas like it seed into book two that that come back around to that, you know. So. Oh yeah, definitely. So. Um, Were there any, like, since this is your debut, were there any lessons learned that you want to share with us today? Um, You know, definitely make sure you have at least one professional set of eyes look at at the manuscript to help you out. Whether you get it through a contest or you do get an editor. If you do, do look at a professional editor I, I would try finding one that might do like it 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 um what am I trying to say the a short like test like give them like the first few chapters or something just to see how they edit and how you guys communicate to see if you have a rapport because and make sure they kind of like the stuff that you're writing because you know you have to have a good rapport understanding it and then there's nothing that says you have to accept any of the comments from anybody, but you also should have an open mind and not, you know, close off ideas and stuff. Because I know I have, I have foibles that I find all the time when I'm writing. Like I have this wonky thing, like when I'm just like pounding out the words, I'm like, he did blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I could just say he you know, and get rid of the did, you know, so, yeah. it's kind of, you know, so you, you definitely need to have another set of eyes. Um, then as far as like self-publishing, you know, I use Atticus for formatting. I find it really easy. Some people don't. It's um, just depends. On, I find that one pretty intuitive. And that's what most people who self-publish actually use for formatting. Um, but if you don't feel comfortable, you know, you might want to find somebody else to format if you self-publish. And I definitely get my covers from somewhere else because I am not a cover designer. <laughs> I am artistic, but I am not a cover designer. So I actually went to my cover for Champions of Light was made by 100 covers. And I enjoyed what they did and, and the rapport I had with working with them that I will keep doing my book covers through them oh wow that is so cool so where can people find you online well i have books.altheadamgard.com will take you to my main landing page on story origin and from there you have a link to my book there's some other links to my blogs and then all my social media and my bio are all on that oh cool that is so cool yeah so um well do you have i'm gonna ask you a question because actually this happened with me you say you're artistic. Have you ever done any? Have you ever draw? Uh, you know, created any art that actually represents something that's in your book? Um, I haven't really drawn as as much as I used to as a kid. I mean, you can see some paintings back there, but they're from foul me things or a crazy attempt at a uh, Northern Lights thing. Uh, but uh, <laughs> um, as far as actually drawing anything out of my books I haven't actually managed to do too much I did I did hand draw a map of one of the cities that's on my 
world that will come up in another book in a totally for a different totally st story that doesn't go with this series directly so oh cool yeah the reason i ask is i encourage everybody to go and check out my facebook page because i um or even um if anybody from the 540 is, is watching this um check out my my fa facebook post on 540 because um, and I can show it here, but you won't get to see the 3D effect like you would. But I did this as a rep representation of something one of my characters drew in a book. In my mm. book. Can you see it? Yeah, I can see some of it. Yeah. It's, yeah, it kinda, it's kind of blurring out depending on where you hold it, unfortunately. but Yeah, but if you go look on Facebook, you'll see it better. Yeah. But... That is just, I mean, I, the Holy Spirit gave me that. And if anybody has ever done, has anybody ever thought about doing some sort of craft or drawing pictures or something rel re um, relative to your book that represents something in your book, uh, have fun with it. That's, that's all I got to say. Yeah. I was going to say, def definitely have, have fun with it. Cause... Yeah. Cause as you go, yeah, because there'll be people who'll come up with things and stuff mm -hmm. as you as you grow and get more of a fan base. Right now, I'm I'm tiny and starting out, and I'm debut author. I mean, my book hasn't been out a month yet. It'll be officially a month in three days. <laughs> wow, that is so cool! So we are doing a book Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did a book launch in like mid May up to. And through the week of June six, it was June six was the Tuesday was the official launch day. Oh, that so. is so cool! So, would you like to leave? A, would you like to share a Bible verse with with us today? Well, I have a good one that's still posted right up here on my desk that uh, my pastor's wife gave me. I don't know, probably over a decade ago, which is Proverbs three twenty five through twenty six. It says, "Be not afraid of sudden terror and panic, nor the stormy blast of the storm and ruin of the wicked when it comes, for you will be guiltless." So, like, even all the stuff going on in the world, just remember that you know when you're following God, you'll be you'll be protected and be going the way he wants you to, even if bad things do happen, you know, he's there taking you through it all. So we're not supposed to be afraid and, and freak out. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love that. So um, would you like to close us out in prayer? Okay. Thank you, Lord, today for allowing me to be on Anne's podcast and excuse my trucks going by. Um, and I pray that her podcast does well and all the members of the 540 do well and everybody else who is watching that God is with you and will lead you to wherever your dreams go with the talents he has given you. And that no matter what life throws at you, that you know that with him you can overcome and do what he has set before you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So we challenge you today to go out there and read, to get inspired, write something inspiring, and share your create your creation with the world. For when you've touched one life, you've touched thousands. Thanks for joining us on Inspirational Journeys today. And remember, your story matters.